Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Handmade Hero, show where we code a complete game live on stream. We are just debugging uh, the stuff we wrote yesterday, which is a Huffman decoder. Well, it's two things, actually. It's a Huffman... Um, it's the thing that builds Huffman tables based on the PNG specs statement of how Huffman tables should be built. And then it's a Huffman decoder for those Huffman tables. Um, I, of course, don't know anything about the PNG spec, so I am literally flying blind here just reading uh, the spec. But I did want to try to do it that way once first, just so we could have one on stream where we go from the spec. The only other time I think we ever did any file reading, it was a BMP, uh, and I had read BMP files before. Also, they're very simple. They don't have that much of a spec. <clears throat> So we never did a whole lot in terms of trying to get a spec working. So I thought I'd at least try for a little while before looking at someone else's PNG reading code to see how far I could get just from the spec. The spec is not great, I will say. Um, it doesn't really talk about things I would like it to talk about in a number of places. Uh, and again, that's really mostly because PNG just refers to the deflate spec and the deflate spec kind of doesn't really say everything that I would want it to say about like endianness. Um, and stuff like that, but <clears throat> they're not awful. Uh, I've read some pretty bad specs in the past, uh, ones where I think you might say you have no hope of actually using the spec to decode the thing, and I've had to really just kind of black box it uh, and do a lot of like poking and prodding. So this is not that kind of spec. Uh, this is still a decent spec, it's just not, you know, a great one. Uh, where, where, you know, where anybody can just show up and write it. Uh, you kind of need a little bit of finesse on this one. So I'm not really looking forward to this debugging process because I do think it'll be a little bit laborious. But um, it's certainly better than a lot of specs out there. So, you know, consider this a middle of the road kind of an experience. Uh, this is definitely, you can get a lot worse uh, than what we're about to do. All right. So if you remember where we left off, uh, we just left off trying to figure out uh, how we would sort of go about knowing whether we had this right at all. And so if we come back to sort of the beginning here um, and just walk a little bit through the code, I kind of want to explain um, how we're sort of approaching this here. Now, we read an IDAT header out of the PNG um, that, uh, well, actually, I should say we read all the IDAT headers out of the PNG and we don't really do anything with them. We just chain them together uh, into sort of a linked list that we can then traverse when we wish to read them later. Now, the reason that I did that is because I wasn't super sure that all uh, writers would follow the thing that was in the spec. Uh, the thing that's in the spec specifically states that IDAT chunks have to come one right after another. That's exactly the kind of thing that I don't expect all writers to follow because writers do all kinds of crazy stuff. So I just figured it's easy enough for us to just remember where these are uh, and then traverse through them later. That way, if someone does hand us a PNG where the IDAT chunks aren't contiguous, we can handle it. Plus, since we already know that there's this gunk in between them, we know we would have had to do work to chain them together anyway. So it's pretty straightforward to just go ahead and build the linked list, then walk back through them. Since we read the whole file as a chunk anyway, it's not like we're issuing extra reads. Plus, this isn't going to be a fast PNG reader Either way, because we're doing bit at a time reading here, um, which is not particularly efficient. So just in general, this is, I think, fine. It's a more flexible way to do it. And we're not going for a world record here or even a medium record. Uh, so anyway, when we get here to look at the INAT chunks, uh, what we are looking at is some basic startup information. And the way that we're consuming bits outside of the Huffman, I think is correct. The reason I say that is because this part looks sensible to us. We are getting a reasonable B final and a reasonable B type when we read in the first and then second, third bits to build those two values. So I think our assumption, and also the spec said this, that we are looking at LS uh, B, like least significant bit at a time. Bit consumption is correct for everything outside the Huffman codes. Uh, and so when we look through this part, I feel like that probably worked okay. I do say probably worked okay because I don't really know, um, but I think there's a chance that this part is working correctly and we don't need to look at it too much after that. Uh, so what we can see here when we get down to uh, the B type two, which is what I expected to see, turns out we will need to do uh, this one 
probably because as uh, as um, Martins pointed out yesterday, although I misread the spec uh, in PNG when when I thought they were saying that Deflate would only ever use B Type Two, um, I think they are actually saying that they can use uh, B Type Two or B Type One. I think. Um, I think Martins was absolutely right about that. When we went back and looked at the section 10.1 of the spec, it did seem to say that. Uh, so for right now, though, we're only looking at B-type 2s. Uh, we don't have any data that's in B-type 1, so we just want to get B-type 2 working. B-type 1 should, in theory, be basically the same. It's just instead of doing these reads, we would precede our Huffman tables with stuff that we already know, like basically hard-coded data from the spec that we just put in. Right, so that's not going to be a huge deal to support B type um, one. After we get B type two working, it should be relatively straightforward. But getting B type two working is going to be um, is going to be a grind. So uh, in here, what I'm so what I'm trying to get at on the bit consumption thing is I believe these values are sensible. Then, like I think this you know 29, 29, uh, 14 is not a unreasonable set of values uh, to get. These are basically the Huffman uh, table setup values that were like, they're just um, counts uh, of stuff that we're supposed to get. I think those are reasonable, which again, is just, I think we're seeing the bit reading happening okay here, but I don't know. One of the, one of the really bad parts about compressed data, so this is sort of just a philosophical point, is that compressed data, the better the compression scheme, the less possibility there is for clearly erroneous output. If you imagine something that's an image compressor, right? It's producing an output stream, and that output stream, when you process it, is supposed to produce images, right? Well, any possible way you can have nonsensical data in that output stream that does not lead to a correct image is effectively wasted information inside that bit stream, right? So the better and better a compressor gets, the more likely you are to always see something that could be reasonable in the bitstream because all things that could show up in the bitstream will be reasonable, right? So you usually end up in this situation where once you get into things like when I'm only reading five bits at a time, it's pretty hard to get a ridiculous value. I can't get four billion coming out of a five bit read. Right? Because if I got five billion, uh, four billion coming out of a five bit read, something really bad has happened. But if we'd actually read an entire U32 from the data stream in a fatty, non compressed format, and we saw four billion, that's a real good, clear indicator that we screwed up the parsing further upstream and we know where to start looking for our error, right? So one of the big problems with compressed data, and it's not a problem in the sense that somehow they're bad, it's just for development purposes when you're writing the decoder for a compressed stream, knowing when you've screwed up gets much harder because you don't actually know whether a value is reasonable or not because most of them will look reasonable even if they aren't. That's just what happens when you can only read values from zero to 32. They're all probably reasonable, right? So that's sort of what goes on there, right? Uh, okay, so if we keep going forwards uh, down, uh, down through this process, again, no real way to know whether our uh, HCLEN table got set up correctly, but it looks, again, like something that could plausibly have happened, right? You know, is it... Is it ironclad proof that this got read correctly? Absolutely not. Uh, is it obviously wrong? No, right? So I feel like this HCLEN table could be okay. All right. Uh, so we know that these uh, H, th 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 this part of the, the Huffman table build here, where we have eight bits worth of um, possible Huffman code, right, that we know, because basically every uh, symbol that we read could be encoded in up to eight bits. Uh, that was just de the determination from looking at what these values could come out to be. Does that make sense? Basically, the uh, the, the HC Len table here that, that we build our codes for, seven here uh, is sort of on the high end. You can't have like a nine or 10 bit value uh, in these code lengths. And the way that we know that 
is because when we actually read these bits in, we're only reading in three bits for the length. So even if the all the bits are set, we can never really get to eight bits of code length. Now, why didn't they just add one to it so we can get to eight bits of code length? The reason is because they do need zero because they specifically said in the spec that the hclin table will contain zeros in the places where things aren't used. So we know that we're zero to seven number of bits. So that means that in here, eight bits of Huffman is more than enough to do it. Uh, in fact, now I think about it, seven bits of Huffman is really more than enough to do it. We don't actually need the eight. Um, so that's actually not necessary. Um, this, is, this doesn't affect um, our, our behavior in the code at all because, uh, let me go ahead and switch over to one that's not have my head in the way. Uh, we can set this number to really anything and it just makes our table bigger. Uh, but we don't actually need eight bits <coughs> because if the longest code sequence we could see is seven bits long, uh, then I think we, we don't ever really need uh, the eight there. So I think technically, and let me just double check that that's true. I think technically we'd be fine through the compute Huffman there. Uh, we would never hit an assertion at, at seven because these uh, only reading three bits and we can never have a, a code length of, of eight. So anyway, uh, we then have the, the compute Huffman stuff, which I'm gonna go ahead and step into here. Uh, I don't know why I can't set a break on that line. We're not compiling in release mode, are we? We're in, we're in debug mode. I do not know why I cannot, um, why didn't it let me set a breakpoint? I don't know why it wouldn't let me set a breakpoint on that line, just uh, Visual Studio uh, fantasticness, I guess. Anyway, uh, if we step into the compute Huffman, this is the part that we wrote yesterday. Uh, again, just flying blind from the spec, uh, just trying to suss out what it was telling us. In here, we, here we've got this code length histogram and all our first loop does is count the values uh, that we're gonna actually uh, count how many times we see each individual code length. So when we get through here, uh, as you can see, we now have a histogram that tells us everything uh, that we saw. So, you know, we've got three zeros, three, uh, five threes, three fives, four sevens, and obviously nothing up uh, here because the, it can't ever hit eight or above in this particular Huffman. Again, because it's only a three bit read. So here we initialize that uh, the, the um, zero away to zero. And the reason for that is that we're specifically saying we're never allocating any codes to encode uh, things that don't show up. So we clear that one out and we set our next unused code. We then go through here. Um, and what we do here is we, uh, each step of the way, sort of assign the Huffman bits uh, to, let me show that, Where, there it is assign uh, the starting value to each of the um, Huffman counts. So for example, for code length count three, those are gonna start at zero, and then fours are gonna start um, at 10, uh, fives are gonna start at 28. And what that's doing is it's just leaving space for however many of the Huffmans we, we saw, right? Uh, when we say we've seen X number of threes, we need to leave that many Huffman codes available, uh, that many bit patterns basically available uh, before we start assigning ones to fours, five, six, and so on, right? And again, this is us just following the spec. This is basically what the spec told us to do. Now, we don't know if we did it right, but you know, this wasn't my uh, doing. That's just how they wanted to assign Huffman codes. So that's how we're doing it, right? Uh, somebody was saying we had a less than bug in here. Um, sorry, I don't remember. I think Valvis was saying it maybe, or um, I promised I would look at it, uh, but I can't remember who said it. So let me just look back. Here it is. Yeah, it was Valvis. Uh, I think there is a type typo in the code you copied from the standard. You have a less than instead of a less than or equal to. Uh, we didn't really copy any code from the standard, but we translated code from the standard in a sense. So I'm assuming this is the part we're talking about because I'm not sure what other part uh, we copied. Maybe it's the part later further down um, that he's talking about because I don't know that there is a less than here. We have some less thans that are search related. Um, 
but that's probably not what he meant. So maybe he means the code a little further out. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, that's, that's uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, anyway, let me finish going through this code so everyone's on the same page, and then we'll go to the next one. So this part is the part we really just don't know. This is the part where I kind of just was like, I'm not sure what they mean here, so we're kind of just in like trial and error mode. So what they said was that when you take a code uh, from the Huffman table, what you need to do is the Huffman bits, unlike all the rest of the bits, are going to come in with their most significant byte at the bottom, right? Now, I don't know what they meant by that because there's two ways that I could believe you to mean that, right? One thing you could have meant was that you just are writing Huffman codes this way, which means that this routine already takes that into account and is assigning codes the way you wanted them assigned for the way they were read in, right? Because nothing here says, I mean, a Huffman code doesn't have a notion of most significant that I can, I, I, like, I don't, I'm not a compression guy. I don't know that a Huffman code has anything other than just first bit, right? Like there's the bit that comes in first and that bit tells you whether you keep going on the Huffman or not. Sometimes not, sometimes you read two bits in, right? It depends how many, but those first end bits tell you whether to like output a symbol or keep going. Then the next end bits tell you to output a symbol or keep going, right? most significant, I don't know what they meant by that because there's not a significant to part. Maybe you think the most significant one is the one that gets decided on first. That would, that's my guess, right? But I, but I don't know because that's not really explained. Um, so I don't know. So looking through here, let's see if they say it explicitly because it's been a while since we read this and let's read it with that in mind because this was where we got gotten to. So, uh, given this rule, we can define the Huffman code for an alphabet just by giving the bit lengths of the codes for each symbol of the alphabet in order. So that's what we're processing. This is sufficient to determine the actual codes. In our example, the code is completely defined by the sequence of bit lengths, 2, 1, 3, 3. The following algorithm generates the codes as integers intended to be read from most to least significant bit. So, so I'm assuming what that means is this is producing the integers. The most significant bit is, that comes out of this is the one that will come first in the bit stream. That's how I'm interpreting that. Uh, the code links are initially in tree len. The codes are produced in tree code, right? Yes. Uh, consider the alphabet A, B, C, D, E, F, G with bit lengths 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 2, 4, 4. For step one, we have this. After step one, we have it. Right, okay. Step three, this is this code. Okay. So I'm assuming that they're writing this with the most significant bit here and the least significant bit here. And what they're saying is this will come first in the bit stream and then this and then this and then this, right? That's what I'm assuming. Okay. And then on top of that, where I'm coming from with the bit most significant, least significant, was the other part in the deflate spec, which was up here somewhere. Um, trust me, it was here, here we go. That said everything's LSB right up to the Huffman codes, which are suddenly MSB, right? So the Huffman codes get read differently from everybody else. That's how I took that to be, to be specifying, right? Okay. So, uh, given that fact, our task now, the first thing I want to do, is figure out whether I actually constructed the table properly when we read that part and decided we had to invert this thing here. Because this was sort of, as we were working through that, uh, you know, I just said, okay, let's do a simple thing in here to reverse the bits as a test, right? So as we go through our entries, uh, this will this base index here, that will construct, I believe, the entry into the Huffman table as if the bits were read LSB first. Now, why they didn't write them LSB first, I don't know. 
right? It seems to me like if everything else was LSB, why wouldn't you leave the Huffmans as LSB? There must be a reason for that somewhere. I don't know what it is. Uh, maybe that's because of my naivete uh, with compression, right? I'm not a compression person, so it might just be that there's like a really good reason for it, uh, and I just don't know what that reason is. Maybe it's because if you're consuming it literally a bit at a time, um, No, I, I don't know why. Because it seems to me like the right way to do it is just write your Huffman generator so that the least significant bit is the one you start with. It just seems to me like they've done it backwards. Like, just have everything LSB and just make your Huffman's LSB. But, I, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe I'm just missing the special sauce there. So, anyway, when I come through here, um, I've got the base index... And I'm going to generate the index off of the base index by flipping the bits around. It's not going to do anything for zero because the bits are the same and zero either way. There's no such thing as a most significant or least significant bit when none of the bits are set. So it don't matter. But we flip it around completely um, and we tested that code and actually made sure it worked. And then we're just going to enter our thing into the Huffman table reversed. That way when we see the bits come in, we don't actually have to figure out how to MSB them. Our table just already flipped, right? So again, that might be a stupid way to do this. That's just what I did. Um, so that's how this code works. And we can sort of see it working as well uh, if we just look here. Uh, the hex, oh, in fact, we've already got it right here. Uh, so if you look at the, the flipping of these, right, you can see that uh, this one, because there's only seven bits per Huffman code, uh, you can see here that the flip doesn't do anything uh, for those, right? Whereas the flip for here um, does, it reverses around that center line, uh, right? So there's the flip. And uh, yesterday it was flipping the whole thing. That's because I had set the bit count to eight for some reason. Now it's only seven. That, again, shouldn't affect our reading of the bit stream at all because th the seven or the eight is just how many bits we start with. So we just need to flip relative to that when we look at it. Because remember, we're going to be seeing the bits coming in the wrong order. So we need to flip them around so that when we actually look at them, uh, we get the right uh, answers there. Now, my assumption, and I could be very wrong about this, but my assumption is that we can't actually do just this. Uh, so what I, because since we don't know how long the Huffman code is to begin with, I'm not sure we can just flip it like that without changing the way our bits streamer actually streams in the bits. So I'm concerned that what we actually have to do is flip our bit stream around and read them in that order or have some other fancy trick there. So that's where we left off yesterday. And what I want to do today now is actually work out on the blackboard how this has to work, whether I can just flip and put it in the table or whether I need something fancier than that. So what I want to do is work through an example, basically, to see whether or not the, this actually can be done without changing, without changing the reader into an MSB reader, uh, if that makes sense, right? Okay. So. Ah. So what we want to look at now uh, is let's suppose that we have something like uh, the Huffman codes that we're looking at now. What I want to know is, is this table reverse? If I reverse the table, uh, entries, is that sufficient or does that produce wrong results after the first Huffman code? Because I'm confident it will produce the correct results for the first Huffman code. I don't know that it'll produce correct results for every code thereafter because the shift be shifting in behavior may be wrong. So that's what I'm trying to, va to validate here. So what we fundamentally have is we have a buffer that's seven bits long, right? And that buffer of seven bits long has been read in LSB form, right? So as we read in bits, we read them in and stack them up. So we read in bits that go like this sort of a thing, right? And we're looking at the bottom seven bits of it. So we know that the bit stream was one, zero, one, one, zero, one, zero, blah, 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 right? We're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bits. 
So we're basically just going to look at this piece of it. And we're going to look that up into our Huffman table, right? Now, what we know, for example, is let's say that we had two different Huffman codes that we cared about. And I'm just, these are not, let's, just, we don't even care that they're Huffman codes, right? That doesn't even matter. Forget Huffman. We just want to look at bit patterns, right? So we know that we had one bit pattern that we cared about, right? And it was one zero, and that coded for something, A, right? And then we had another bit pattern, let's say, that was one one zero, and that coded for B. So if we were reading these in most significant byte format, when we look at this and this, and I'll, heck, I'll just throw the last one in too, that's another one zero, right? What we should see is this is one zero, right? One zero, so that's an A. We see one one zero, one one zero, so that's a B. And there's another one zero, so that's an A, right? Just forget Huffman, that's just what we thought we should see, and we see it, right? So now the question is, does the table generation produce the same result if we just reverse the table lookup, right? Because what we want is the thing that literally read it that way, from LSB to MSB, and read it in the opposite order over here, right? So it, it basically said, okay, pretend this whole thing was flipped around and start reading from the most significant byte down, right? Uh, again, I think that's what the spec was saying to do. Do not take this as me saying this is what the PNG does. I have no idea. I think that's what the spec told us to do, right? So what's going to happen when I look at the table? I'm going to look up this seven bit value right here, first of all, right? And what I'm going to find, because we reversed the whole thing, right, is that our, our, uh, our table in everywhere where the top bits are one, uh, I'm sorry, where the bottom bits are zero one, <clears throat> because we produced this zero one Huffman code right when we were coding the A. Uh, well, actually, that's not true. Let me rephrase that. Let me follow this through exactly because this may be part of the problem, right? So when we pack in this code, Ah, ah, I think I see the problem. I think I already see the problem. God, we did this. When I pack in this code, it said most significant byte first. That means if it's one zero, that's the most significant byte, then it comes this, then everything else should have come after that, right? Meaning it's one zero and then anything else, those are least significant uh, bits, right? After here, after this MSB, which is at the top of this. Then we flip it around and put it into the table. I didn't remember to do that. What I did when I put in the bit reverse, right? Where is that? Uh, here it is. When I put in the bit reverse, I'm still putting the arbitrary part at the top. But remember, it's supposed to be the other way round. Right? So actually the, the LSB part is supposed to be this part here, but I put that in the MSB before flipping. So that I think is wrong. That's, that is incorrect. So I, that, that is, I think that is our problem. Um, well, it's a problem anyway. So let's fix that immediately because that is definitely wrong. It, again, unless I'm completely misunderstanding what's supposed to happen, which is entirely likely. Okay, so we know how many arbitrary bits there are. So we're gonna OR in um, this entry index, which is the arbitrary bits part. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna shift up the code part, the arbitrary bits amount, right? So we're gonna stack that, oops, that's still running. Uh, so we're gonna stack that part uh, at the top uh, right before we do, um, uh, we're gonna put the like actual code at the top, so the most different byte goes first. Then the entry index is the part that's in the least significant parts. Then we, then we're gonna flip it around so they're all backwards, right? And then off we go. Does that make sense? So that's what we're doing there. Um, now, since the entry index is arbitrary, really the only thing we'd have to flip it is really the code, and then we could have packed it that way. But 
We're just going to do it this way so it's all consistent, right? Uh, so now if we look at what happens here, when we start packing a particular value, which we'll do here, uh, let's just look at it. When we start packing a particular value, like this has 16 entries, right? What we should see is the high bits should remain the same, right, the entire time, and only the low bits vary. And that's exactly what's happening. That's the opposite of what we did last time. Uh, so again, I, I think I messed that up uh, when we threw that in there. I think that was wrong. Uh, so, all right, so that's it. Well, actually, you know what's interesting? So you notice it worked this time. We never, we did not get past this before, right? We got an assertion that we hit a symbol we shouldn't have seen. Uh, not one of these, one of the uh, Huffman decodes. So actually that was a huge bug that we just fixed. So that's great. Uh, so hey, yay for working that on the blackboard that told us exactly uh, where we went wrong. And look, we actually decompressed the exact right number of things. That's a great sign. That means it looks like we fixed part of our Huffman decode there. Okay. Um, so what I don't know now is, is this, we don't really know if the rest of our stuff here has made any sense. And this stuff, I think this is all, uh, I don't think we finished this. So this all needs to get, I think this all needs to get, uh, yeah, I, I don't think any of this stuff is right yet. Um. That exits after the first block there, right? Yeah. So I don't really think all of this, I don't, I don't really know that any of this is correct. I, we sort of put this in here and we need, we need to go back and look at that. So, so we'll deal with that in a second. So uh, at the moment, we do have some reason to believe that we may be decompressing this properly, at least in a limited sense, because now we are able to complete and we get the exact number of entries we think we should get which is a good sign. Which allows us to produce our Huffman tables for the uh, literal distances, uh, which we can then use to decompress the rest of the stream. I just don't know, yeah, w I don't even remember what the rest of the stuff is. I don't even know why we're, e why are we exiting here? I, I guess that was just because we didn't want to keep going. I guess, I, I don't know. So let me take that away because we should be able to now uh, work on this back part of the routine to see how we're doing there. And that should be able to allow us to, once we get it working, run to the end of the file, consuming the right number of bits. So let's get rid of that and see where we blow up. Just I'm just curious now because we should be able to uh, start working on that. Okay, so you can see here we've got a... Um, How do I get back to that? There we go. Uh, you can see here we've got a, a, a bug notice here, encoded len of, of 12,000 uh, there. So if we go back up to, there we go. Uh, if we go back up to here, it looks like this is not quite right. So somehow we did, oh, well, you know what? That might be though the second time through the loop. So let's actually uh, verify that that's true. Let me just see first. Yeah, so you can see the first time through the loop, uh, we're good. The second time, so this code is probably wrong. It's probably not consuming. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't. This just this just doesn't look done to me. So let's just go finish this part first before we go any further, because I think this is just missing stuff. All right. So our goal now is to get this part to work properly. If we assume this part works properly, which we don't know yet, see if we can get this working properly. Because if we can get this to work properly, uh, then that means we could go through all of the blocks and actually decompress potentially the right amount of data, which would be a nice first step towards getting the PNG working. So I'm going to go ahead and um, pong back over to the spec here and read that section. Uh, so I believe that section comes from here. You can see uh, what this says here. It says, read the block header from the input stream. Uh, that's what we did up above. Uh, if it's stored with no compression, we do the basic copy. That was this, right? Uh, I believe. And this... This we didn't, um, doesn't look like we actually did the copy though, right? So that, 
copy len bytes of data to the output. Yeah, so uh, this right here uh, wants to actually, you know, retire this much data. Uh, so what we want to do is we want to start outputting. Now, we didn't write anything for outputting, but we want to here. Uh, at the very least, we just want to consume that size. So this flushes a byte. Uh, this is the thing that basically says, hey, uh, let's get rid of um, any data that's still in the bitstream from the Huffman. We're going to read aligned now. Uh, this doesn't really need to be consumed bits. This should probably be consumed size, right? Uh, and it should consume uh, a U16. In fact, uh, we've got to consume for this exactly, uh, exactly this, right? Uh, we've got a thing it can just do consume that. So this will get us uh, our two U16s uh, that are the len and the inland. Now, what I don't know is I don't know whether these lens need to be uh, byte swapped. It seems like that's the uh, modus operandi here, that the they come in in the wrong order uh, for a little onion. Don't quote me on that. But if you look at what had to happen here, whenever we were reading uh, values that could take on a larger than a byte uh, value, we had to do an endian swap. So I assume that those values will be endian swapped. I don't know. I'm gonna put an endian swap in there for now. Um, I can try to determine that from the spec, but I'm not sure if it's set in the spec or not. Uh, if we do do uh, an endian swap here, uh, it just looks like this. Right. So if we load a, a can I can I do this? Yeah. Um, I don't actually know if that works. It does. Uh, so we can use the intrinsics there, or we can use the um, the non-intrinsic version. Usually, this gets compiled to one of those anyway. Uh, let me just double check that it will. That way we can do it in a platform non-specific way uh, and still get the get the thing to produce the correct value. There we go. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and, and just uh, take a look at that code just real quick. Uh, so if we run to here, I'm just gonna go to the disassembly. I just wanna see uh, if, oh, <laughs> gotta actually do it. Actually, uh, right, this does it in place. So if I look at the code for Indian swap len here, uh, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna look to see whether or not I actually got um, a, an Indian swap. So you can see here when I call into that code, and I guess I should uh, be more specific here. Uh, so yeah, so in here they call up to Indian swap. Now this is not the optimizing compiler, so I'm guessing actually, and of course we don't actually hit this case. So what I should probably do is set us to 02, so it'll compile it in there and I can see. I just wanna see if it produces the byte swap. Um, let's see here. So I don't know. So it's optimized that out completely. So I'm gonna have to do something here to copy it. So what I could do is I could just say while n minus minus and I could actually do the cop the copy out, right? So there's the decompressed pixels. I'll just copy um, the the input that we get here. 
uh, maybe I'll call this dest. So I'll actually do the copy. Uh, the source that we need is going to be however big this um, len told us to be. I don't have any idea what that will look like because we don't actually hit this part of the code. Uh, but if I actually grab uh, lens worth of data, then I should be able to, you know, just copy it out like that. Okay. Again, that code is never hit, so we can't actually see it, but we can look at uh, what its disassembly is and just see whether it actually did the byte swap uh, the way I wanted to, right? Uh, so looking in here, looks like no. Uh, so let me make sure I, to, I let me make sure I get that code right so that it does. You can see it actually doing the and and the or there. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so if I shift it up eight, I mean I feel like that should have done it. In a U16, if I shift it up eight, it will leave the bottoms as zero, zero, right? And oh, pfft, duh, Why the, I wrote it wrong. I forgot to shift the other one down. Uh, so if I shift that one up eight, it should leave zeros in the bottom. If I shift the other one down eight, it'll leave zeros in the top or them together, that should be the swap. The compiler should be smart enough to see that. And I just wanna know if it is, that's all I'm doing. Let's see. Uh, so actually, it did a it did a rotate, which that's also correct. Um, so that's that's fine. Uh, I don't think we have to care which one it does as long as it does it, and it did. So I think that's fine. All right. Uh, so anyway, yeah. Don't really know what's supposed to happen here. Don't know if these are supposed to be Indian swapped or not. Um, but we're going to assume that they are. I'm going to put to do in there just so we know that it's not code that I thought was right. Uh, it's just something that I tried. Uh, so I don't know, but that's what we think. So I'll go back to our debug build now and take a look at the next part of the code. Right. Okay. Uh, so we did that now. And now we've got this section. We don't handle the non-dynamic Huffman code case, so we're gonna have to do that later uh, by just putting in the tables manually. Uh, so we're down to here now, All right? So let's take a look at that. Okay, so when we get to the part where we're actually decoding, uh, let's actually follow the spec here and see what they say to do. They say to decode a literal length value from the input stream. That's exactly what we did here. We're using the literal, the lit len Huffman, uh, and we decode one of those, right? Uh, if the value is less than 256, then we copy it to the output stream. So whatever the thing was, uh, we just, it gets outputted, what, the actual byte, right? So basically lit len as a U8, um, just truncated directly down, uh, right? Just so, you know, this, right? We're literally just writing that to the output stream. I guess, right? That's what it seems to say. So that's just anything that comes in as a byte goes out as a byte, right? Anything that's greater than a byte, uh, that we actually start to use here, right? So uh, otherwise, if the value equals the end of the block, which is 256, then break from the loop, right? So that's this here because that's if it's exactly equal to 256. Otherwise, if it's greater than 256, we do some stuff, right? Uh, we decode the distance from the input stream. That's this here. Uh, then we move backwards distance bytes in the output stream. Now this is wrong. Uh, even though it doesn't say it here, this step is more complicated, I think, is the key, right? So we just literally translate this code. It's not right. Um, so let's just get rid of this here. Uh, this requires us to do some work. So if I come over here to, uh, 
Uh, here, 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 here. So uh, this part here, I think, indicates that the there's a lot more that goes on in the length part that we haven't written yet. Uh, so this was the pseudocode. The pseudocode omitted like all this stuff, I think. I think that's what happened. Uh, so if we look in here, what you can see is that like, if we have a number between 257 and 264, uh, then you're gonna do that length directly, right? It's, it's gonna be like 254, it's gonna be this, the number minus 254 to get the length. But if the number has more, right? You can see it keep going here. If the number is higher than that, then you get into things where you need to read more bits from the code stream to determine how far you should, should jump, right? Uh, so yeah, so anyway, that is, what is this? Uh, Length, backward distance pairs, where the length is drawn from 3 to, 2, 5, 5, 3 to 258, and the distance is drawn from 1 to 32, 768. The literal and length alphabets are merged into a single alphabet, where value 0 to 25 represent literal bytes, the value 26 indicates end of block, and 27 represents length codes, possibly because of false, right? So I believe the next thing we need to do is, in addition to the Huffman decode here, we need to... Uh, Huffman to code the distance like we did, and then uh, we need to do the extra bit stuff. Now, what I don't know is where those bit reads come. So there's two ways we can interpret this. One is you do both Huffman's first, then read extra bits. The other one is Huffman extra bits, Huffman extra bits. And I don't know which one it is. I don't know if the spec even mentioned it, but we'll look. Uh, so we'll see if the spec says. So, uh, reading this closely, the literal length of blah, 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 the value 2d6 indicates end of block, and values 2d7, 285 represent length codes, possibly in with extra bits, following the symbol code as follows. So the fact that it says possibly in with extra bits makes me think it comes right after. I'm not sure. There should be, should be interpreted as machine integer store with the most significant bit first, of course, because why wouldn't we switch it again, right? Fantastic. As the machine is restored, the most significant bit first, e.g. bits 1110 represent the value 14. Um, not sure how that example clarifies anything. Um, I, you wrote it in display form. Of course that represents 14. What else could it possibly represent? You neglected to say which order those bits came in. All right. Whatever. Anyway, so, yeah. Reading through this, we know we need to grab an extra bit, two or three, four or five, right? Uh, who knows how they came up with this, but I guess it was just tweaking, right? I guess there was just tweaking. Compression people love tweaking. So I'm assuming they just tweaked it, and this is what ended up being the best thing. I don't know. Uh, so anyway, when we actually look here, this looks like the same table just for distance codes. So I think we just do those two, and off we go. I, like I, I think that's all we're doing here. So the main thing that I don't understand is just looking here. It's like, okay, so we've got to invert the bits. Um, So that's great. Um, so I also th I'm trying to think through, is there a fast way to invert the bits? Um, there probably is. It's probably like, you know, oh, if I, if I subtract and then and and then add or something, I get the inverted value. Like, there's probably a good binary trick to invert the bits of a value. And we're going to want to know that here because if we have to, like, read in MSB-based bits all of a sudden, 
I don't really, and, and this is not during table generation, this is actually during decompression. I don't want to be sitting there doing actual bid inversion. That's just totally stupid. Um, so we're going to have to go think about whether we can do a quick binary trick to flip the order of our bits. I'm sure there's like, oh, XOR, then subtract, then shit. Like, there's going to be something, I bet, that will do that. I just have to think through what it is. <coughs> More like do a search for a quick binary bit inversion um, and find something from 1962 that's like, we found this thing. All right. So let's try to make this stuff work. So I'm not sure what the best way to do this would be, but I think uh, the best way to do it is to just use a table because we know that there's only 257 to 285 are the values. Um, so I'm just gonna, I, like, I'm just gonna use, uh, like the table entry thing we have here. I think that's the easiest thing to do. So actually we can use the PNG Huffman entry if we want to. Um, so I think we can look up into the table uh, and it could tell us the value to subtract from the base to get the starting length number. Uh, and then the number of extra bits to read in to add to that value. Uh, and then we can just go from there. Now, again, I, the bit flipping thing is gonna be annoying, um, but that's just uh, the way it goes sometimes, my, my dude. So anyway, uh, inside parse PNG, we can have uh, some entries here. So this is gonna be a, um, a distance value. Oh, this is a length value. So this is the uh, length uh, extra. So this is going to be 257, 258, 259, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, right? Uh, and it's going to be zero bits extra. So uh, I'm just going to do these like this. And you know what, I, you know, this can be pulled out. We'll just put it out here. Uh, so here's a global uh, and we'll just make a table. It's not pretty, uh, but it'll work. Uh, all right, so Actually, since we have one that goes from zero to nine, I could save myself some typing by doing that. So I believe 285 is just 258. Uh, so essentially, yeah, what we would wanna do here is yeah, just in encode the subtraction value uh, and then the, the bits used. So the subtraction value for 257 is, we want it to start at three, so it's 254. Like you'd sub take the value and we'd subtract 254 from it uh, and we read zero more bits in, right? Uh, and that goes up to 265 is the next time we change. So at 265, uh, we're assuming it's 11, so it looks like we still always, oh, so do we always subtract 254 from the value? That, that doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? Ah, so it goes up one each time, okay. 
So at 265, we would still do, right? This is going to be nuts to get right. Okay, so at 265 minus 254 is 11, which is what we want. But now we get one bit of extra data, right? So now 266, we would not be subtracting 254 anymore from the value, right? Uh, instead, what we're subtracting from the value is something that gives us 13, right? So what we actually want there is uh, 266 um, uh, we want to know what value we would subtract from 266 to get 13 right so we want 266 minus 253 which produces uh, the, the 13 value so that goes down by one in order to account for the fact that you read one more bit right so it doesn't need to do that so the next one will go down again right because since we've got one extra bit there we now know that 266 should produce i'm sorry um that's the one we're on so we now 267 should produce 15 right so if we assume uh that, that 267 should produce 15 then we want to go down one again right so every time we read that one we're doing that one bit read, we know we kind of uh, go down one more value to account for the extra bit that was specified, right? This is super weird. All right, so now at 269, we start reading two extra bits, right? Oops. 269, we read two extra bits. We do that four times. 273 is three. 277 is 4. Twenty one is 5. And 285 just produces 258. Apparently that's just the maximum value. Uh, why that doesn't include extra bits, I don't know. It just doesn't. So... Again, tweaky. Compressors are tweaky. Uh, so 285 is supposed to produce 258. So 285 minus 258 is 27. So I guess we just take the value, right, and subtract 27, and that produces it, and we read no extra bits, right? So that one's kind of a little bit of an anomaly there. Uh, so I believe 269 minus 249 is what we want to produce 20, right? Um, so to produce, and that's what we should start at, right? Oh no, it starts at 19. Oh right, because it's still this one bit. Now we start subtracting more bit, uh, more numbers. Okay, so 250 minus 269 is 19, that's what we want. 270, is supposed to produce 23. Uh, so that's 247. Uh, right? So that's all good. Uh, and then we've got 271 has to produce 27. It's 244. So yeah, that just goes down by three each time because hey, we're reading two bits. So that makes sense. Uh, so keep reading two bits. So that should be 241. And this one, again, even though this is a three, it's the two bits here that count. Uh, so we subtract by, we go down by three again uh, on this one alone, right? And let's just make sure that lines up. Two, th 273, 238 is 35. That's what we expect, right? So now we're to, up to 274. Uh, so this is going to be going down by 7, probably. So I'm assuming it would be 231. Uh, let's just see if that's right. So that produces 43. Um, so that's the right value. Yep. So we just keep going down by 7s uh, each time. Uh, so that's going to be, what, 224, I believe. 
uh, down by seven again. So that's going to be two, one, seven. Um, down by seven again, and I get 210. Uh, so 277 minus 210, uh, and that's 67, and that's right. So now we're gonna start going down by 15s because we're reading four bit at a time, right? Uh, so going down by 15s, this should be 195, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, this would be 180, uh, this would be uh, 165, and uh, the last one here would be 150. So 281 minus 150 is 131, and that's exactly right. Now we're going by 31s, right, for the last set. Uh, and the 31s are going to be, uh, let's see, so starting here. So it would be, what, 120 minus 1 is 119, right? Uh, going down by 30 again is going to be, what, uh, 89. Uh, so minus 1 is 88. Going down by 30 again is going to be um, 58. Right, 1 is 57. Uh, and then uh, we're at the end uh, of those. So let's see, 284 minus 57. 227, and that's right. All right, so we've built our magical length table here, uh, which means we can now use it to do our decode, and then I don't know how we're supposed to produce the right value out of that uh, for the bit reversal. Um, we know how many extra bits to consume, and we know that uh, we need to do the reversal. So let's think about what that reversal actually means so when we read this in, let's just let's just see if we can work it out at a small bit level and see what we if we can get the bit pattern uh, figure it out. I probably knew how to do this at one point and I've just forgotten because it seems like the kind of thing you would do back in the bit twiddle era. All right, so uh, if we have a zero or a one, we know that that just works, right? Because you don't need to flip the order of the bits in something that only has one bit. On the other hand, if we instead have the bits in the opposite order, so we've got 0, 1, I'm sorry, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, right? Um, and what we want to produce here from these is 0, 0, um, 1, 0, 0, 1, uh, 1, 1, right? Uh, how are we going to do it, <laughs> right? Uh, how would I get that? So if you look at what happens numerically to these, just to see if that helps us at all, it's zero, one, two, three. And what we want to produce on the other side of that when we read it in instead um, uh, is zero, two, one, three, right? Which is a pretty weird thing to look at, so who knows. So this is the trans bit transformation for two values. Uh, not sure how we do it. Um, for three values, here's how it would look. Um, so that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, um, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, right? Uh, and we want all of these to go to 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, uh, 0, 1, 0, uh, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, right? Looking at the numbers, that's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Here it is 0, uh, 4, 2. God, that's so weird. Uh, so 0, 4, 2. Uh, what's that? 6, uh, 4, 5. Uh, that becomes three and seven, right? So zero, four, two, six, four, five, three. Oh wait, no, that's not a four, that's a one. I don't know why I said four. I was going too fast. There we go. Zero, four, two, six, one, five, three, seven, of course, right?
All right. So Hmm. So what is four minus the value in this case? Or three minus the value. So three minus the value in this case works for the inner two, right? Because three minus two is one and three minus one is two. But for the zero and the three, it doesn't work because the zero becomes the three and the three becomes the zero. And we didn't want that, right? Um, if we did something like nodding the value, then it works for the zero and the three because they get restored properly. Uh, but it doesn't work for the interior because now they've inverted themselves, I believe, right? So, for example, if I take uh, knotted, this will become a zero. So three minus zero equals three is correct for that. Knotted, this becomes one. Three minus one equals two, but it was supposed to become a one, right? Uh, I mean, obviously, I could put this in a table. That would get me out of a jam. But there's got to be something, right? So I don't know. I'll search to see if there's a good thing. I can't think of anything, but those, that, that's something I'd have to stare at for a while. All right, uh, let's see here. Stanford Computer Graphics Lab, huh? There's a lot of uh, a lot of this here. So it is pretty. It's a pretty complicated one. Uh, so here's the one that's the sort of not good way. Uh, the lookup table we don't care about because we don't really want to do that. 64 multiply and modulus division. So reverse the byte. So they use, okay, so yeah, these are one of those like carefully constructed numbers ones. We would not have come up with that on stream. Um, Last two steps can be messed up with the rest of the bytes. So that's pretty nice. A non divide version. You just multiply and 
And you can even do it without 64. Wow, 2001, that's pretty late. So it looks like there's nothing you can do other than the constructed, well-constructed uh, mathematical ops. There's no actual straight bit twiddle you can do. You've got to use a multiply, which is cool. Um, but I guess that also does beg the question. So how big is the biggest one I'm going to have to read? big. So table wise, I might have to read up to 13 bits, right? So I don't know. A 13 bit table So it's really 2 to the 14, right? Because it's 2 to the 13 for the size of the table times 2 bytes, uh, which is the size, it's a, it's a U16, right, if it's reversed. So I don't know, a 16K table, I'm going to have to go ahead and say I think we probably can just, I think we probably just do the table, I'll, to be honest. Um, so let's, let's take uh, this guy here and actually make this be a thing. Why did they do this? I do not understand the rationale for having the bits come in in the wrong order. Um, if the entire spec had been written that way, I would understand, but it specifically brings in LSBs normally for all the other values. It's real weird. I don't get it. I hope they had a reason. I just don't know what the reason is. Uh, so here we are, you pass in the bit count, uh, and it'll do the reverse of that, drop that in here. So we'll do a reverse bits, uh, you pass in the thing you want to reverse and how many bits uh, there are, and it'll do its thing. I, th that's, that's just the same value, right? Yeah. Ah. Okay. So I think that does it. Uh, I hope. So what happens if the value is odd? So I think it's still okay. Are you still okay? So if the value is odd, does it hit the middle bit properly? So let's suppose you're slip, flipping seven bits. Then seven divided by two. Yeah, because you go up, you do the middle one, and it just it just writes it onto itself. So both of these things produce the same result. Uh, so if we have our little reverse bits here, then we have to do our table build. Um, and we know that the table goes up to 13. So, uh, well, 
we can we know that we have to do everything from zero to 13 so it's a 14 entry table might be a better way to say it uh, so I shouldn't have said 14 entry table. I should say it's one shifted up 13 is how many entries there are on the table. Uh, so when we come in here, we have to initialize. So we can go uh, r index equals zero, r index is less than array count reverse bits, plus plus r index. Now, if we wanted to here, we could even make this table even bigger and just do it when we build our other table as well. I don't think we need to do that. Um, so I'm just going to do just reverse bits, R index here. Uh, what I want to do here is just say like, okay, the R, whatever the reverse version is here, I'm just going to reverse the value. Um, and, oh wait, no, this is way worse. Cause I have to do it for each of these sizes too. Because can you can you do can you still you can't use the table of bit reversion unless you know which size of these you're using too. Ugh, that's awful. All right, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do the procedural way then. Because I think that would that would just be. Oh no, you know, okay, no, no, no. So we can still do it. <clears throat> the problem is we have to do a shift afterwards, right? So if we have a 13 bit table and we want to look up the reversed value, we can still look up the reversed value, but we have to shift down the result by the difference in the number of bits that we're talking about, right? So if we only want three bits reversed, we can still look up those three bits in the 13-bit table, but then they're going to flip to the high side. And so we need to shift them down by 13 minus 3, right, to get rid of the 10 bits that we don't actually care about to see which ones we do care about. So that's actually not as bad as I thought it was when I just said it. It's still okay, um, I guess is how I would put it, right? Um, so I think that's all right. Okay, uh, so we still need yet one more table here. Uh, this is for dist extra. Uh, this is the same exact thing as the other one, but now we've got this nonsense here, right? So it's the exact same thing. Um, it's just, it's kind of got its own little, yeah, it's, it's got a very small number of values and a very large number of extra bits is basically what it, uh, what it boils down to. And what I think we want to do here is rather than do the number that you would subtract, I think what we want to do here, it looks like, it looks like here we'd want to do the number you add. So it's like the starting number, right? Okay, so here if we get code zero, uh, the distance is one and there are no extra bits. Uh, and that is code zero. Actually, that was a mistake. Do it like that. Ah, butterfingers. There you go. Uh, so you can only have 29 values, it looks like. Um, I 
So I guess they just don't allow the Huffman table to have any more than 29 symbols in it. That's just how they did it. Uh, so there's only 29 symbols in the Huffman table, which is fine. Um, but that's what we're dealing with here. Uh, so we know we've got uh, 0, 0, 0 bytes. I guess I'll just do these one at a time. So the distance is 2 for the code length of 1. Uh, the distance is 3 and 4. So this is just the starting distance. And then you read this many bits and you add it in, right? Uh, and of course, there are no bits to read this time. So then we have two ones. Uh, the distances are five and seven, looks like. So you start with the five or the seven, you add the one in there. Two twos. <clears throat> uh, so that's nine and 13. Starting points. Uh, two threes, 17 and five. Oops. Uh, two fours, 33 and 49. Uh, 65 and 97. <clears throat> um, two sixes, and that's 129 and 193. Two sevens. Well, it's two eights, two nines. Two tens, two elevens. Uh, two twelves. Two thirteens. Um, so, yeah, then from there we just go, so 193, we go 257, 385. 513, 7.69, 10.25, 15.37, 20.49, 30.73, 4.097, 61.45, 81.93, 12285 and 24577. Okay, so <clears throat> we now have our two tables. Uh, that will sort of decrypt for us uh, what we need to know to read the extra bits. And we have a way to reverse uh, the bits as well. I will not use this table yet. Um, I'll just call reverse manual, but, uh, reverse manual because we know that works, or at least we think that works. Uh, and then we'll get the table working uh, because I think we don't want to sit there reversing the bits manually like that. That sounds nuts. Uh, okay, so looking through here, we've got uh, all that read stuff happening. It's all fine. Uh, let me put us over uh, here. So let's go ahead and read from those two tables and do what they say, because um, that's the next step. So in the case where we're not out putting a literal, so this is the, the literal. Um, I don't know why I put out there. Probably should have done this, I guess. Um, so when we get the lit len that's over 256, then what we need to do is actually decode the value uh, using the table. So the lit len minus 256 is actually uh, a table index. So this is our len tab index here. Uh, and that's going to tell us the rest of the information after we actually look it up, right? So we have a Huffman entry here, which is the len uh, tab entry. That's going to be the PNG length extra table looked up by that value. Uh, that will give us two things. One, it will give us the extra bits that we need to actually consume. Uh, so if the len tab 
what did I call that value? Um, I don't know, bits used. So if there's a bit used, we actually do some stuff. Otherwise, we don't. Uh, so we'll look at that in a second here. Uh, so we start off with the length. The length is assumed to be whatever the len tab index was. Uh, actually, it's whatever the literal length was minus whatever the symbol value here was, right? Now, now that I think about it, since I already had the len tab minus 236 here, I probably could simplify that table to just be the add value um, if we had wanted to do it that way, which probably would have been smarter, uh, but well, it doesn't matter anyway. So anyway, we come in here, we get the, the uh, yeah, I don't know why I didn't do that. It seems weird for, that I didn't do that. I'm not sure why I didn't do that. Let me, let me read the table. Because when we look this up here, I don't know why I didn't just set this to be the value that you start with. I made my life harder for no reason, right? Because here it's just 257, the length is three, right? So this should have just been that. I don't know why it wasn't. So it's just three, four, five, six, seven, Thirty-one, sixty-three, one ninety-five, two twenty-seven, two fifty-eight. All right. Uh, so let's try that again. Uh, so when we go ahead and create the length now, all we need to do is just start with the length table symbol. And then if there's more bits, we just add whatever the consume bits value is. Uh, however many it told us. What was it? Bits used. However many it told us to do there. Uh, and whatever comes back, we need to reverse, right? So that's how many bits. That's the one to reverse. Uh, I think it's like this. So reverse bits takes what? The value and the bit count. Um, so I think that's all good. Uh, and then we add that in. So that's uh, how we decode that symbol. So then when we get the distance value back, uh, the distance value is actually the distance table index, right? Um, because it doesn't actually tell us anything other than what to look up. Because we're about to grab a bunch more bits from the stream. So then what we want to do is look up the PNG Huffman entry for that. Uh, the PNG Huffman entry for that is going to be whatever the disk tab index is. Here's the disk tab. Uh, then what we're going to say is, all right, the distance itself, uh, which again is backwards, so it's actually negative, but we don't care because we're we'll subtract it later. Uh, so the disk tab symbol is what we start with, uh, and then this is exactly the same. We could actually make a utility function for this if we wanted to, because this is going to do exactly the same thing. So it's going to take a look and see: do we need any extra bits? If we do need extra bits. <clears throat> 
Uh, then we're going to consume those bits and we're going to reverse them. Then we're going to add them into the distance to produce our final distance value. Then when we're all done with that, uh, now we actually go through and copy out. So we need a source value here. Um, our source value is going to be wherever we're at in our destination stream minus the distance uh, that we're traveling backwards, right? And then we want to do a countdown. So we take our length and uh, we just copy the values in. Uh, and I should note here that uh, I don't really know if it's subtract distance or if it's distance plus one. I assume that it's just the distance here because the distance starts at one. So I assume that it's just the negative distance, right? So I start where I'm at, I go back um, and then I copy, right? Now what I can do here, just to try and again, put in more assertions to catch like when we're interpreting the code stream wrong. What I can do is I can say, if the distance would have moved me back, like if the source is now less than where I started, right? Um, so, you know, the, the decompressed pixels here, then I, I screwed up, right? I've obviously got the thing wrong. So if we got, uh, actually I can just assert that source is greater than or equal to decompressed pixels, right? Because the distance value, if it moves us back before the end of the pixel, the start of the pixels, unless it was a malformed stream, which again, we know it's not, um, we like, we know we did something wrong in our decoding. So that's just a, another way to help catch uh, the error, right? All right. Max reverse bits count is 13. Uh, so that's the way all of these, oops, are going to be reversed. Okay. Um, so I have no idea what that's going to do. Um, but hey, we did our best. Uh, so let's see where we're at. And we can debug the rest of it next weekend because um, we're out of time. So the literal length that we got, uh, the first thing here was one. Uh, which is a literal of one. That sounds wrong. So I'm assuming we did something wrong. Um, I don't know why you would output a byte of one as the first thing. Um, doesn't really make any sense. Uh, then we get a len of 255, uh, which is actually what we would have expected because that's what we put in the data stream. So I don't know where that one, that one seems wrong. The other values seemed right. Uh, then we got a 263. Um, so a 263 is gonna tell us something about our length here. It starts at 10, there's no extra bits used, so it's a rep of 10 in theory. Uh, let's see what our distance said. Our distance value is three. Wait, what? Ah, no, that's the wrong table. I'm like, it shouldn't be three. It should have been one. Uh, so that table, I, I typed uh, the wrong table there. Let's try that one more time. All right, so this time we should see that come back as a one now, and it does. Uh, so now we're starting to copy from there. We're gonna copy some values from that into the stream. So, you know, it's working, but I'm not sure we're really actually getting sensible values. Uh, we'll have to go inspect what the pixels are and see. Uh, we also don't know uh, what transforms were applied uh, because there's obviously filters uh, that get applied to things. Um, so we'll see. 
so okay, so that's the deflate stuff. I we don't so the this is not necessarily um, a decompressed this this is not necessarily the decompressed pixels because there's the filter stuff that gets applied and I haven't looked at that yet. Um, so when we look at the IDAT here, uh, let's actually just quick read in preparation for next week. What what are what do we actually expect to see? Maybe that one means filter mode one or something. So maybe that isn't wrong. Um, you know, who knows? Uh, so let's take a look at that. IDAT. IDAT truck is a zoom data. So begin with image scan lines represented stride in the image layout. The layout and total size of this raw data are determined by the field to the eye header. Filter the image data according to the eye header chunk. Note that the filter method zero uh, implies pre-pending pre -pending a filter type byte to each scan line. Hooray! So that one probably was correct. It's probably the filter type, uh, and we're good to go. And off we go. Compress the filter data. So, okay. Um, so image layout. Uh, we've got two color pixels. Pixels are in I right? Additional filter type byte is at the beginning of every scan line. The filter byte is not considered part of the image data, but is included in the data stream sent to the compression step. Okay. Um, so actually, actually, the first byte of every scan line um, is a filter byte, uh, which means that if we were doing uh, decompressed pixels here, we're actually going to do decompressed pixels uh, plus one, uh, which gives us a place to store that um, that filter byte. Right? Although it's not actually plus one, um, it's because it's not, it doesn't need f a whole U32. Um, so yeah, uh, hmm. how do I want a special case that? I mean, I guess what I could do is try to retire a scan line at a time, but it could compress right through that. So I don't think that's a particularly good idea. This spec, oh God. Why wouldn't you put all the filter bytes in one row by themselves? Right? I mean, come on. All right, it's fine. Uh, so I'm just gonna say like, hey, the allocate pixels call is smart enough to do that. Um. So we'll add like this thing on the end for now. Uh, so there's just one of those per scan line and it doesn't get multiplied by the thing. All right, so that decompresses some stuff and it's whatever. That's just dumb. Okay, I don't know. I'm not a compression per compression person, so maybe I shouldn't call it dumb, but that seems real dumb. Uh, I don't know why you wouldn't store all the filter types together because why would those compress along with the scan lines? Like, the, the coherency is going to be in the filter bytes, not the pixels that go with the filter bytes, right? Unless you think all the scan lines are going to be full duped, but even if they were, you'd still could just do that rep twice and you're not going to save very much. So that seems real dumb. Uh, all right, so let's see where we're at here. So it looks like we're getting a. Um, how far is, is Dest? So Dest is only 26 away, but it's getting like a distance value of 107. So that's obviously wrong. Right? So we get some, we got some badness happening already. Um, so this stuff's probably wrong. We'll go ahead and start uh, work on this um, next weekend. I'll go to Q&A now, but we made a lot of progress, I think. Like we're actually decoding stuff now. I think we're pretty close. I don't think there'll be that much more.
Ratchet Freak. Lit Lin minus 360. Lit Lin minus... Ah, uh, you... You are right, sir. You are very right. Um... Thank you for that. That, I mean, I probably would have taken a while to catch that as we walked through, as we started debugging it the next time. That's, that's real good. Um, so presumably we'll get a different thing here, although I don't know, maybe we'll get the same thing. Uh, what happened to, so this was the source was Did it just read too far? Was the length value huge? So we, we should, I mean, I got to step through it to see what um, actually went wrong here. Uh, Alex Kelbo, once this works, do you think it could be simdeed? Uh, no, it's a highly dependent, it's like reading individual bits all the time. So, I mean, you could maybe do something with like this part to copy bigger chunks or something, but. Uh, it'll also be clear if you write lit len greater than or equal to 257. Uh, yeah, I guess that's true. We could do this. So it's easier to see. <clears throat> I mean, I suppose for that matter, you could also do that. So it's clear that this is a byte output. Um, I don't. I don't know how. How uh, that seems. Maybe maybe that's six and one half dozen on the other. I don't know. Oops. When you are making a PNG reader, I assume you want game textures to be in PNG format. Uh, no, we that is not true. For my projects, I create uncompressed image data and then archive them all with the sum compressor. Is my approach a bad one? I ask because you decided to use. No, we we are not using PNGs for a game format. This is because we just wanted to have a quick way to get Photoshop exports into the game, and Photoshop has a bunch of quick PNG export stuff that are like it's hard coded into it. You can't change it to do use BMPs or something that's easier to read. Um, so no, I don't care about PNGs as storage format at all. It's a dumb format. Um, I would never store a game asset in a PNG. Uh, it's just to read in Photoshop. Should reverse bits table be U16 and not U32? Um, it could be. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I guess it's probably better to be to be smaller. So sure. Um, so in that case where we do reverse bits there, I should just cast it down. Like so. so that should still do the same stuff, right? Yeah. No bit reversals needed, so you deflate spec 311 first two bullet points. Sean, this is cheating because you've already written a PNG compressor. You're not supposed to be helping. Um, I feel like. Well, yeah, sure. We, we, you're talking about these two. I mean, we read that, but it did it not say, um, I mean, it says it right there, right, Sean? 
Is that just wrong? It says the extra bit should be interpreted as a machine integer store with the most significant bit first. So that seemed to completely contradict that other bullet point. Um, By the way, the lesser equal to I was referring to at the beginning is in the loop in the Huffman decode function, the one with bit index. Okay, so Valbus, let me look at which one you're talking about. So you say the Huffman decode function, this function. But there is no loop in this function, so you must mean some other function. The one with bit index. This one? I don't know which one you're talking about. Are you talking about this one? Oh, and B type zero, yeah, I don't know if I really uh so Yes, you're right. I don't know where at came from. I guess that's the outer one. I should probably make it clear which one is which here. And I could even move this into its own function where it can't access that. We haven't really gotten to this one yet. So this one may be really borked uh, as well. Like I have no idea if that's right at all. The extra bits after being unpacked as described in 311 should be interpreted. So you so you're saying it you really don't you think that that was just poor poor choice of wording on their parts that make it sound like you have to reverse them but but really this doesn't have to happen. Like this is not really the case which would make a lot more sense, right? Cuz I don't understand why they would want you to have to do that reversal. So I mean I could believe that, but I don't know. Um, I have to look and see why we're not uh, able to do stuff here, but Those actually all seem pretty reasonable so far. How many times do we go through this 
So we go quite some time before it gets whatever the bad value is. Like, do we ever reach the end of a block? No. So we don't quite get the get to the end of a block, though. So we're sort of okay, but not quite right. Balbus, yes, that loop. So I really don't know what you're talking about then. I, I don't understand how that loop could ever do anything other than the way that it was written. Um, if that makes sense. So this assigns values to everything in the next unused code array, right? The reason they used less than or equal to in the spec is because they didn't do the whole array. They did however many bits you told it to use, right? But I'm not doing that. I just did the whole, I just do the whole array, just period, right? So I'm not skipping the last element. If I, w if I did less than or equal to, it would overwrite the end of this array and write into whatever was next on the stack, which we definitely don't want to do. Make sense? Yeah, so, so this, like, in the spec, this would have been written like this. Um, where is the max bit count? Oh, uh, uh, like this. Right? Uh, but we're not bothering. We're just, it always does the same. These are both, they just do 15. They both just do 15, right? Um, so anyway, I, I'll go ahead and stop now. It looks like there's no more questions anyway. Uh, so yeah, I don't really know one way or the other whether those things are supposed to be reversed or not. We'll have to take a look. Um, but we're getting closer here. Uh, seems pretty, pretty close. Uh, it's just there's some, I'm sure there's some nagging little hard to find bits that we're going to have to, to, to sort of churn through. Uh, but it seems seems reasonable. We also have to validate our tables. You know, I could have entered some stuff in the tables wrong, which also would, would throw us off. So there's a lot of sources here that could be wrong. And, you know, uh, we'll have to figure out as we go. Um, we'll have to figure out. Probably now that we can see actual data coming through, We'll have to look and see where we start to go wrong. Uh, since we're using a PNG whose contents we know, that should make it easier for us to figure out uh, like where we start to go off the rails by looking to see what the data is that, you know, see whether we get the data we expect, if that makes sense. Um, all right, so that sounds good. I'm gonna go ahead and, and shut it down. Thank you everyone for joining me for another episode of Handmade Hero. It's been a pleasure coding with you as always. If you want to follow along at home, you can always pre-order the game on handmadehero.org. It comes uh, with a source code so you can do your own experiments. If you want to try and get the PNG reader working um, before next week, you could give it a shot. But I will be here next week, uh, next weekend to do exactly that. So I hope to see everyone here for that. Uh, until then, have fun programming, and I'll see everyone on the internet. Take it easy, everybody.